High five. Hey guys, welcome back. Jet Scott here as always, and it is Monday. Woo, yay. <laughs> uh, Monday after MoCan, you guys will see this video probably before I finish the MoCan video or not. You'll find out. I'll find out too. I'm not sure. All I know is I got to replace this here GoPro because I cracked the uh, glass screen in front of the lens, which kind of sucks. By the way, anybody didn't notice? I got a haircut. Check it out. I got a really cool bald spot. Buddy Daniel told me I got a really bitching bald spot the other day and told him I appreciate that. And another friend told me I got to stop scratching my head so much. <laughs> oh, I love my friends sometimes. But anyways, what I want to show you. Still waiting on parts for the Dana 60. And I have decided I'm not buying parts from Dr. Diff anymore because I still ain't got my new clutch packs for the uh, Dana 60 to finish it. So I'm ordering from a new supplier. And when I get their parts and we get to actually finish this freaking Dana 60, if the parts they send me are right and we get it together, I'll be sending them a plug. But I'm not going to say their name just yet because they ain't proved themselves. However, the salesman was super cool. His name is Paul. But uh, anyways, I wanted to show you what we got from the old swap meet. And by the video's namesake, there's a very special item in this lot that you guys hopefully will find as cool as I do. So let's check out some of these parts. So I was a little bit late to the swap meet. And I missed out on some of the awesome deals, but I did buy some stupid stuff that was cheap. One of those things being this baby blower. This is an old Detroit blower, but it is tiny. I mean, this thing is literally small. Like, I got a 471 over there. That thing is freaking huge. This guy had to have been off a two-cylinder Detroit or something. I mean, it's tiny. It's not got the typical V pattern. It's got a regular flat flange. It's just freaking ridiculously small and adorable. And everything works on it really good. It spins real nice. We're gonna say watch, now it ain't gonna spin. I'm gonna get my fingers not caught in the gears, but I'll show you, you can hear it working. But yeah, I bought that. Don't know why, I had to have it. Couldn't live without it. And another thing regarding boost I bought. I bought a turbo. A little factory Chrysler 2 liter turbo. Look at how tiny this thing is. This thing is adorable. Look at the size of that. That's my finger. <laughs> I don't know why I bought this. I just, the price was right and I just thought it was adorable. And plus, I bought its bigger brother. Bam! That big Caterpillar diesel turbo. That's my fist. <laughs> I couldn't live without this, too. I don't care about boost or nothing, but turbos especially but this thing was too cool not to buy this thing's freaking huge we might do it something with that in the future i don't know i just couldn't pass it up <coughs> picked up another three barrel holly why i'm not sure just couldn't live without it the price was right just had to have it and we got another holly double pumper with an hp main body that we'll be saving that for the future Got another oil pump. Only bought this one because it's got the good gear set in it. So we might be using that in the future. Got some more pulleys for the old stock. Single groove crank pulley for a big block. Single groove water pump pulley. Always good to have. Bought a low deck six pack intake from a friend. That'll probably be getting listed for sale. Don't need it. And I got these from a friend of mine really good friend of mine and these are one of a kind only ones probably around and these are not gold paint this is real gold anodizing mopar gold anodized valve covers dual plug came with the plugs so if we like these on our Pro Stock Hemi with the dual spark plugs, by the way, it's back there. The one with the magnesium tunnel ram and the factory, factory steel dual plug valve covers. If we like these better, we'll run them. 
I'm thinking about getting those chrome plated or nickel plated or something. You gotta find a shop that'll do that cheap, affordably, not cheap, but affordably. But we did pick these up, couldn't live without them. They're freaking sweet. I mean, I've never priced what anodizing costs, but I guarantee it's probably not cheap. So we got those. Bigged up a whole bunch of these carburetor hats because the guy was selling them for five bucks. I don't know if you've ever priced these on the internet, but they're more than five bucks. So we got those. Man, I'm just kind of bragging about everything I got. And we got something in that box. It's going to be in a video I'm going to be filming today as well. And I can't show you that because that's progress on said video. But I guess let's head inside and check out the real reason why you're here to watch this video. Hey, bud. Everything look good in here? What do you mean? Gabby's mad because I'm waking him up. He needs his beauty or sleep. Ah, okay, bud. We got to film. We got work to do. Uh, subscriber brought... I met probably 15 of you guys at MoCan, and that was just super cool to meet people. You know, I have no idea who you are, <coughs> but you know who I am. It was pretty neat. Um, yeah, I met a bunch of you guys down there. Ah, we want that open at Mocan, and one of you guys, I can't remember your names, I met so many of you guys, and I apologize, brought me these. Freaking cool, this is an old, uh, Fire Chief toy charger, plastic. Hood actually opens, reveals a not-so-looking, Chrysler-looking engine, but who cares, it's still freaking cool, look at that thing. And, I can't remember if it was him or one of my buddies said, be cool to make this into Dad's charger. And we'll put that down. And we got this one too. Make this into a Jezebel. What's cool about this one is it's steel. And it's blue. And it's got a friction motor. I mean, that's just neat. That's just neater than shit. <laughs> and trunk opens on this one. It's a little bit stiff. But we actually got a trunk. We got a full interior. And this one's got a hemi. Oh, yeah. So, we might be doing kind of a restoration on this one for a Jezebel themed car and a restoration on this one for Dad. Another thing I picked up from a friend were these. Anybody in the comments knows what these are? Post it in the below. I guarantee you. And I know you guys are smarter than hell, but... I'm going to reason to bet not many of you guys are going to know what these are for. There's two of them in here. There's a special oil pump cover there, too. They are Chrysler. I'll give you that much. They are indeed Chrysler parts. But enough rambling and bambling. Let's see what's in that black plastic bag. Okay, and we're back. So any of you guys who have watched this channel for any late time will know I'm a holly nut. I live and breathe holy carburetors. That's all I believe in for carburation. I won't touch an Edelbrock. I won't touch a Carter. Just, I don't understand them. I don't speak that language. I speak holly, which is the language of all white trash rednecks. <laughs> so, I want to show you this. So, here's your Garden Variety 4150 holly double pumper. This has got an HP main body, but, you know, your typical Garden Variety holly. And this holly is from my personal collection. This came from my favorite YouTuber of all time, Jonathan Winnens, Jonathan W on YouTube. Absolute favorite channel. There's not a video I miss of his. And literally, my opinion, most underrated YouTube channel. Whole deal. He's got 90,000 subscribers, very well earned. And in my opinion, he deserves a million. The stuff he does and the way he does things, He's just the greatest, and I was just happy to hook him up with carburetors for a straight eight and his future projects. And I knew he had this little guy. I've always wanted one of these glass float bowl holly carburetors. Now, he's a Carter man. Nothing against him. I still love the dude to death. Really nice guy as well. But this thing, I always wanted one of these. And the fact it came from him means the world to me. So, <clears throat> super cool. But as you can see, the difference is here. Holly never changed a whole lot. 
<laughs> Full bowl still in the front and leaks. And then we got your typical 1050 Dominator Holly, which as you can see is a little bit bigger. But what are we sitting on? <laughs> What's underneath this black plastic, you may ask? Well, I'm here to show you guys something that I can almost guarantee you've never seen before. The mother of all Holly carburetors. Oh, ha, 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 ha. From Holly Company, Detroit, Michigan, US of A. The mother of all Holly carburetors. Boom. Have you ever seen something that big? Let's just show you a size comparison. Double pumper on top of that bad boy. Let's get her out of there. Yep, that's a pretty big carburetor. Yeah. Check that out. So, anybody's curious what this bad boy is? It is indeed a Holly Carburetor. Holly Carburetor Company. Model number 1685FR. Serial number 10349. And this thing is all factory set up from August 30th, 1945. I'm going to let you guys just stay in suspense here. I mean, look at the gears. The actual throttle blades are set in ball bearings. Oh, this thing is just over-engineered like no freaking other. So why would you have to over-engineer a Holly carburetor like this? Well, one, probably prevent leaks. Because when you're in the air, getting ready to drop bombs... You probably don't want to be leaking fuel out of your holly carburetor. This is from a oh, R3400 or 2600 Brett and Whitney engine, radial, 16-cylinder, I believe, 1600 horsepower. Don't quote me. I have to get re-upped on that. I knew that before I went and got the carburetor, but now I'm too giddy about the carburetor. The carburetor is so damn cool. <laughs> uh this is a variable Venturi 200 CFM to 12,000 CFM B25 bomber carburetor. This one carburetor would power one of the two big radial engines. Yeah. We'll just open those slides up. And we can just, you know, stick our... We could probably wear this thing as a damn hat. It's so big. Man, I just had to share this thing with you guys. This thing is NOS never used. In fact, this is the most time it's probably spent out of its original box. Its original freaking box. With its paperwork. Its flow numbers and everything. I mean, if you guys just don't think this is cool, I don't know what to tell you. We need to get this copied before all the writing fades. But all of our flow numbers, all of our test numbers, everything from Holly Carburetor Company. Don't tell me that ain't cool. But yeah, as a Holly collector, I now have Holly's smallest carburetor, little one barrel, and Holly's biggest one barrel. <laughs> oh, this thing does, you know, it's funny. If you see a Predator carburetor, and I got two in the house, this is almost, I, I think the Predator is like a straight ripoff of what Holly did here. I mean, just, just gush with me for a minute. Look at how damn cool this thing is. This thing is literally huge in comparison to a normal Holly. My friend Tom, who I got this from, to show me how big it really is, he put it next to a big block Chrysler intake. In fact, that six-pack intake right there. And this thing is as big as that intake. It's freaking nuts. And this is now in my personal collection. 
And maybe it'll allude to me having to own a radio engine someday. And maybe a B-25 bomber. Tell me that wouldn't be cool to have that parked in your backyard. <laughs> I'm going nuts. But I just wanted to show you guys this. I think this is probably one of the coolest things I've ever bought. Will I ever be able to use it? Probably not, but I could. You know, you build a big adapter flange, mount that on the old Pro Stock Hemi or a Slant 6 or... Wow. Mm -hmm. We may have to make this thing work. But I do have manuals coming because I am fascinated by carburetors and how they work. And I want to know how everything on this thing works and what all of this menagerie is. I know I got this throttle blades right there but i want to learn what everything is on this i know how it works because this thing is just too cool this is a piece of history honest to goodness this is true history um i believe uh carter weber or no not carter weber but uh stromberg and weber they made their version of a carburetor for the big radial engines too um this is the holly one and as a holly man I had to own it. I couldn't pass it up. A bunch of you knew what I paid for it. But I just had to share this with you guys. It's just too dadgum cool not to share. But, time to put her back in the box. Because I'm going to start thinking about mounting it on an engine in here pretty soon. And we don't need to be doing that. Oh, but before we go, guys, we got one more thing we got to do. We got to get some opinions on this bad girl right here we're gonna put those gold valve covers on this one side and we're gonna get some opinions whether or not these need to go gloss black wrinkle black nickel plated or if we're gonna rock these man oh man does that look freaking cool Oh, uh, there's just something to be said about gold anodizing. It just gets me every time. These aren't actually secured down. I just got the tubes and everything sitting in there. Because these are getting stored away. Gold anod Any kind of anodizing doesn't like sunlight too much. Even though we're here in the shop, it'll be fine. But I still want to keep these protected. But man, do those look good. Of course, this wire, these wires got to get sorted out still. <clears throat> I got new wires for the B-plug holes but yeah just oh man i don't know if i like the gold so much with the race hemi orange block maybe if we paint the heads maybe that'll look better i don't know but that's what you guys are going to decide down in the comments whether or not we run these or we do something with the original factory ones these are real deal chrysler dual plug steel valve covers whether or not we send these off to phoenix specialty coatings to get done a wrinkle black or something or i send them off to get nickel plated which i think would look really cool better than chrome but it's totally up to you guys get your opinions you guys got any other ideas let me know but just wanted to see how that was gonna look we're gonna take some pictures of that oh yeah this is definitely an engine we're gonna hear run by the end of the year i don't care what it costs me we're gonna hear it run we got to hear this thing run. Been waiting too long. But that's going to be it for all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed just this little sneak peek into what we picked up at the swap meet. I got more things I'm going to work on today and the rest of the week. I hope you enjoy those future coming videos along with the video at MoCan because I'm pretty sure this is going to be done before that video. Oh, so as always, guys, I hope to see you in the next one. So take care and bye bye.